this one specific video for people. Hardcore data recovery. If you were stupid enough, and most people are, <laughs> to uh, have only one copy of your data on one hard drive and it crashed, and you're like, oh my god, I'm screwed. I've already told everybody about SATA bridge failure. If you have an external hard drive, you just crack that shell open, you remove the SATA bridge. This is why everybody should have a dock, okay? That's why I basically only buy naked hard drives, unless it's for a portable computer. I mean, I have obviously encased hard drives like this. I don't want to pack around naked hard drives when I travel, obviously so. Nobody should. But most of my uh, hard drives are naked. It means they're just raw hard drives like this. It's the best way to buy them. They're the cheapest, the best. I don't have anything to fail that's connected to this. I'm going to hook this directly into a dock and hook that into my computer. I back up or make copies. I also make uh, uh, clones of my of my uh, onboard uh, system. I make uh, system clones. That way, if I ever have a computer crash, I can boot up from the external hard drive or recopy it once I get a new computer. Just swap out the data because I don't want to reload all those applications. I think it's so stupid. Everybody should make hard drive clones, meaning the clone of your internal computer. Um, but data recovery, I mean data recovery, serious data recovery costs a lot of money. I'll tell you the secrets of what those people do. What those people do, this is why I have a copies of a lot of the same stuff. That means, you know, I've got a lot of copies of this specific model of Toshiba. The two points of failure, I'll show you a naked hard drive here. Two points of failure really are a head crash. These are the heads connected to the voice coil on the armature those crash and what you could do is you replace it with another armature. Well how do I do that? Oh very simple. Um, second point of failure is hard drive controller board. That would be this green board on the back. This removes the screws on a modern hard drive. It's very easy to replace. I mean it's not like you have to unhook anything. You just unscrew it, swap it out. How do I swap it out? Always keep multiples of the exact same hard drive. If you have a head crash the, actually, the easiest thing to do, unfortunately, you have to sacrifice it. But if you do that anyway, I mean, the only people that have issues with this are people that screwed up to begin with. If you, like I said, if a professional has a hard drive crash and all the data on that, they say, screw it, throw it in the trash, like I got 20 more copies of that data. You know, professionals don't give a shit when their hard drives crash. They don't because they were, you know, those who fail to plan are planning to fail. You hear me? You hear me, girlfriend? So what you'll have to do is if your hard drive crash, you're going to have to find the specific model, open up the case. This one's a smaller one. This one's small, harder to open up. Open up the case, find out the exact model, or buy the same exact one without, because a lot of the hard drive uh, data recovery people charge you a fortune. All you have to do is find the exact same damn hard drive and uh, do process of elimination. Okay. You're going to swap out hard drive controller boards. You're going to swap the good one to the bad one. If that doesn't fix it, then what you're going to do is the heads will be parked anyway. So they'll be down right here. All you have to do is crack both of them open, remove the spindle. There's spacers between these discs. Okay. Clean your fingers really good, all the oil off your fingers. Okay. Now the hard drive may not survive very long because it isn't sitting absolutely super super perfectly but it'll survive long enough to get the data off of it it doesn't matter if you leave a fingerprint on there it'll still be able to read the data it wouldn't survive long term that way it's only for recovering the data you remove the entire platter system and you swap it out you're, you're being victor frankenstein this is what the people that uh, charge you a crap load of money do they find the exact same hard drive they swap out the parts until they find the failure point and those are the failure points. The voice coil slash armature, this is the part that's actually going back and forth over the platters like this. Uh, head crash. Just remove it, swap it out. That doesn't do it, then swap out the hard drive controller board, which is very... You can teach Helen Keller, could, teach, uh, could learn how to swap out a hard drive controller board. You just swap the boards out. You know, it's not like it's a, a Jenga to get it back together. You just remove these screws, Pop it out and pop the other one on there. It's just contact connections anyway. A hard drive is both very simple and very complex. Okay. The second point of failure is like um, uh, third. Excuse me. The third point of failure is motor failure. The actual motor that's actually, uh, but that's actually quite uncommon. I mean, it's always a head crash or hard drive controller failure. The serious uh, crash that happens all the time is before doing any of that. Make sure the SATA bridge 
which is the bit on an internal excuse me on an enclosed hard drive like this except for like a super all the three and a half inches are the same here's this little card and it sits right here and there's one inside of here by the way I've got a lot of SATA bridges and what it does is it's connected to your hard drive and this is inside of a plastic case okay you see this you see this all you do is crack it open like a clamshell you're not gonna hurt it unless you do it like a you know like a drunken monkey or something crack it open you'll find basically this except there'll be a little naked card right here you just unplug it like this boom and this is why everybody should have a friggin hard drive dock and you take that naked hard drive dock naked hard drive and you pop it in your dock boom hooks via USB a little power connector right here which are in my back room back there anyway 40 bucks for one of these plug this in your computer nine times out of ten it is this stinky little ass part right here SATA bridge fillers a SATA bridge a SATA card which is basically the size of a piece of gum there's one inside this little plastic case here and they just literally unhook like Legos. That is the problem nine times out of ten. However, a lot of the Western Digital and the newer uh, Toshiba hard drives have that SATA bridge integrated into the controller board. And they do that to save ten cents on parts. That means that little bridge is integrated into this. And then you're like, oh shit. Then what you have to do is you have to get the exact same drive and swap out the hard drive controller board. The hard drive controller board is just this green board here. So this is what people charge people a fortune. It's like, oh my god, I sent my hard drive off and the, the data recovery cost me $600. Yeah, well, you know what they did? They did exactly what I just got done telling you for the past five or six minutes. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's exactly what they do. Sometimes it's a little more intricate than that if the data is scrambled and they have special software to extract the data because there's no metadata saying where the rest of the data is, but that's something else. I'm talking about true electrical or mechanical failure. You're just playing Victor Frankenstein and swapping parts. Part number one is always this. Part number two, failure, is usually head crash. Then you swap out the armature. Part number three is the hard drive controller board. That's really it. The motors rarely fail. So it's always that. The SATA bridge, the uh, head crash, and the armature. You should swap out the armature. And third is the hard drive controller. Now that Those three parts, which are pretty easy to do, to teach Helen Keller how to swap them out, covers 99% of hard drive failure. But if you reach that point, you have fundamentally mentally screwed up because you only had one copy of your data. The professional says... My hard drive crashed. I don't give a shit because I got 10 more copies of this data. That's exactly what I say, too. Some of my really, really important stuff that I've been working on for decades I've been working on. I got 20 copies of it. I burned it onto archival DVDs, dozens of hard drives, server farms in various countries around the world. It is safe 100 ways to Sunday. Safe. You know? extremely safe. It's never going to go anywhere. Even once I croak, it is safe all over the world. Various people's hands. That data is never going to get lost. I'm not going to spend half of my life making data and then like having on a few external hearts like, oh shit, you know, there went like 20 years of my life. It's like, what the fuck? You know, what? I mean, I just hear that from people all the time. It makes me angry and it makes me sad. It's like, oh yeah, I just lost, you know, 10 years of our company's data. It's like, you know how much a hard drive costs? Do you know how much a hard drive costs? Do you know how much a hard drive costs? You just lost 10 years of your life over a $60 hard drive. I'm like, damn, what the hell is wrong with people? That is the stuff that burns my ass literally right into the dirt right into the dirt it's like okay so you just pissed away half your life over the fact that you didn't have a redundant and even two copies is enough two copies to me is danger zone danger zone stupid epic stupid and people think well you know I just transferred the data over to a new hard drive you know what that means it means nothing it means absolutely nothing when you do that because infant mortality People that have tested countless hundreds of thousands of hard drives, it's infant mortality. It means like, well, it's a new hard drive. It's going to be lasting for years and years. It'll be okay. No, it doesn't mean shit. It's called hard drive infant mortality. And it approaches about 85% at six years. In other words, if your hard drive is six years old and you're still chugging along, 
You think it's going to keep chugging along? You're delusional. You're just flat out ignorantly delusional. Really, the bare minimum on number of redundant copies is six in various places. Uh, fireboxes, it needs to be the really, really important stuff needs to be burned onto archival optical because everything undergoes ferromagnetic depolarization. Everything. Okay, that means the best ideal conditions, your, your data will self-destruct. It is irrefutable, it is undeniable. Nobody can deny it. It's irrefutable. Ever just want to see the, the world's thinnest hard drive? These are actually quite rare. It's still under current production. This is a Seagate hard drive. This is the world's thinnest hard drive. Isn't that amazing? It's only 5 millimeter. It's a 500 giger. That's the world's slimmest hard drive. There's only one platter in there, baby. 250 gigs on either side. 250 times 2 equals 500 gigs. So there it is. There's the world's thinnest hard drive, which is in an electrostatically safe case with a copper plate on the bottom, which I did myself. So anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. That is the world's slimmest hard drive at 5 millimeters. Actually, technically a hair under 5 millimeters, but anyway. Uh, that's it. Thank you for watching so much. If you like this video and drop a buck or two, tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. I'm here to help. And so spoke the, the Lord of Hard Drives. Because I'm an evil hard drive and I want to crap all over your data. Woo. I want to make you cry like a little girl because your data has been lost. That's kind of funny, but it is extremely accurate. Okay. You better take my word on this because if you don't, you're going to regret it, and you're going to lose a bunch of data, and then you're going to cry like a little schoolgirl. And that is not a pretty sight. Thanks for watching. Oh, boy. <laughs>